And welcome to the program, this edition covering Nigeria Southeast. I am Bukola Koka. And we'll start off immediately. Today is Good Friday, and Christians all over the world, including Nigeria, commemorate the crucifixion of Jesus Christ and his death at Calvary. It's a solemn day of reflection for believers who recognize the sacrifice made for the redemption of humankind. In countries around the world, Churches hold special services, including processions, prayers, and readings of the Passion narrative to honor the events leading up to Jesus' crucifixion. In Nigeria, Good Friday is marked with reverence and solemnity by the Christian community, which constitutes a significant proportion of the population. Some churches participate in the Stations of the Cross procession, retracing Jesus' final hours through prayers and meditations. The day is also observed through fasting and abstinence as believers reflect on the ultimate sacrifice made for their salvation. And beyond its religious significance, Good Friday in Nigeria serves as a time for family gatherings and community outreach. It's a day for acts of charity and compassion, with many churches and organizations putting together initiatives to support the less privileged in the society. And as Christians commemorate Easter, President Bola Tadubo has sent out his warm greetings to Christians in Nigeria and around the world, wishing them a happy Easter. In a statement signed by his special advisor on media and publicity, Ajuri Ngilali, President Tinubu observed that the sacrifice of Jesus Christ for humanity is an emphatic lesson for leaders and all Nigerians to yield to selflessness and compassion and be steadfast in the pursuit of a united and prosperous nation. The president also strongly commended Nigerians for the sacrifices they have made in the past few months to steer the nation towards recovery and sustainable growth, assuring them that the seeds of patience that they have sown will soon bring forth an abundance of good fruits. The president assured all citizens that as Christians celebrate the victory of life over death, as exemplified by the resurrection of Christ, Nigeria will triumph over its challenges as his administration remains firmly committed to this end. And what do the people have to say about Good Friday? We spoke with some residents of the South, including clergy, on the significance of the day and their message to Nigerians. In Anambra State, the Anglican Bishop of Orca Diocese and Archbishop of the Province of the Niger, Most Reverend Alexander Ibezim, congratulates Christians for being partakers of the redemption work of Jesus Christ. Similarly, the Deputy Governor of Anambra State says all Christians should reflect on the painful death of Christ and remain thankful to God. Submission and obedience to the total will of God means nothing. I call upon our nation to repent. Let there be national repentance from our leaders to the church to all our politicians. All the people that are serving, this is the time for us to repent. Christ is God. That means God himself came down and died in a, in a unique way being crucified on the cross and as christians we mark this day it's a day of sober reflection it's also a day of thanksgiving because god in human form came and sacrificed his life for all of us um the death of christ brings salvation unto us so let's go out there um save the world be good to people and encourage the people because that's why what's all about christianity christianity is about sacrifice Let's sacrifice for one another and do a good deed. To, that's the essence of the death and resurrection of Christ. And in the meantime, some residents in Abakaliki, the Aboyin state capital, have called for youth inclusion in the economic growth and government policies, especially now that the economic hardship is biting hard on citizens. The youth also admonish one another to reflect on what they can do 
better. As a youth, there are so many things that are lacking in this generation now, coupled with um, the pride and everything that is found in the youth. So this is a period that we should seek to humble ourselves, we should seek to emulate the life of Christ, we should seek to do better as youths. It's also a time to go back to your drawing board. If there is anything that you know you have not been doing right, if there is a skill or something you have acquired that you have refused to put into practice, this is a time to, let me put the word, resurrect it back. Because as Christ resurrected from the dead, he brought us a lot of benefits. And I feel that if we should go back to the drawing board and bring the things that we have allowed to die in us back to life, it will benefit both you as an individual and the society at large. Okay, I feel that the federal government can do better um, consigning the youth. The youth should be involved in economic growth, the youth should be involved in government, the youth should be involved in a whole lot of things because there are a lot of youths who have graduated from school and they have not been able to get a job. So if the government can bring in the youth in the economic growth of the country, I feel there are a lot of brilliant minds that can help to improve the economy. We know that it is not easy. The prices of things has, has gone so high, the standard of living has gone so high that in this economic crisis, as a family, you know, families are grade by grade. You should know your standard. It's not a time of competition. It's a time of knowing where you are, whom you are, the type of family you are having, and your pockets. You understand? Whatever you use to celebrate, the most important thing is that you all do this celebration to the will of, to the glory of God knowing fully well that there is an economic crisis, so that at the end, you don't go above your income. And still in the spirit of the season, earlier on I spoke with the former director of communications in Ugu Catholic Diocese, Reverend Father Benjamin Achi, on the essence of the occasion. Let's start by asking you to remind us of the essence of the values of Good Friday. Well, uh, thanks once again for having me. Um, well, Good Friday is uh, a very significant day in, 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 throughout Christendom. And, um, well, in the life of, of every Christian, any person that professes the Christian faith, uh, because it is the day we commemorate uh, what gave meaning to the faith that we profess. Uh, the fact that uh, our Lord Jesus Christ left his divinity in heaven to come and assume our imperfect nature, uh, human nature, to, to pay the price we should have paid for our sins. Yes, um, it's a day the innocent had to lay down his life for the guilty, you know, because uh, even at the trial of Jesus, Pilate was able to say it quite frankly, that there was nothing wrong with this person and there's no reason why he should be condemned, but he still was condemned, even in spite of uh, his innocence, and that you know, and ended up, um, uh, he ended up being, going to the cross uh, for our sake. So it's a very important and significant day for us. And it's a day that uh, every Christian should uh, sit back in sober reflection and uh, pray God for the grace to show some reciprocity for that love, that extraordinary love that God showed to the cross for our sake. Indeed, a, a good way to wrap it up, which is... Um you know, the reason he went to the cross. But of course, then we also have resurrection, which is why, you know, there there's been a lot of questions or one particular question that seems to you know, resonate with a lot of uh, people at this time is whether or not to celebrate since Easter is about the death, burial and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. But you might also want to add to that, you know, amid these um, peculiar circumstances that we find ourselves in, uh, economic downturn, uh, the diminishing purchasing power of Nigerians, uh, we are now faced with the dilemma about whether or not to celebrate. Uh, what would be your admonition to them at this time? Well, um, Easter itself is a celebration of love, God's fearless love for humanity. Yes, uh, the fact that 
um, like I said a moment ago, uh, the Son of God had to leave his divinity in heaven to come and pay the price we should have paid for our sins. So it's an extraordinary show of love. And um, we are expected to, to um, show our understanding, our appreciation of that love of his by sharing love with the people around us. You know, if there is any time that we should exhibit that love of Jesus, it should be now. Um, if there's any time we are supportive of people in our own environment that profess the Christian faith, uh, that, um, that uh, show that they are, I, I appreciate that love that Jesus showed, uh, that Jesus showed to us. And if they really appreciate, if they really understand that love that Jesus uh, showed us when he paid that price for our sake, then it should reflect in the way they live their lives as well, in their relationship with the people around them. You know, show love, try to you know live some uh, live a, a life of charity, try to better the life of the people around them. You know, things are so difficult now. We are in dire economic straits, like you said a moment ago. Uh, it is a sign, a time that we should uh, we should actually show how much we appreciate that love of Jesus by trying to share that love with the people around us. And for those other people that are trying to bring uh, others to harm, uh, personal insecurity all over the place, like in our region. In fact, I don't think there's any part of Nigeria that is exempt from the troubles uh, uh, orchestrated by insecurity. There are people who are actually doing this, and then, uh, and a good number of such people are actually believe uh, in, in God as well, believe in Jesus and the love that Jesus showed, that love that Jesus exhibited when he went to the cross. This is a time that we are supposed to share that love with the people around us. Yes, we have every reason to celebrate, not minding the circumstances around us, because life is the greatest gift that God uh, can ever give to us at any time. And if we are still alive at this point, in spite of everything that life is throwing at us in our own circumstances, I think we have every reason to still celebrate and show appreciation to God for still keeping us alive, seeing us through all the troubles we are going through this time. So I think we still have reason to celebrate, and then uh, it's a time we need to uh, spread that love, to share that love of Jesus, if we really appreciate that love that I uh, took into the cross for our sake. Mm. What would you be telling them at this time? You know, what, what, what values would you propose to them to encourage them to show strength of character, which is really uh, the essence of uh, the passion of the Christ? You know, and anything that could be done, any sacrifices they need to make on their own part to make the life of the people better, they should not hold back. The people want to see them committed to their work of, uh, of, of leading the people and making things better for them. People want to see that action. So that is, that is the encouragement, that's the admonition I'm giving to the leaders. Mm. And as we wind down now, and still in uh, the attempt to derive from the essence and values of the season, it will be remiss of us not to also... Uh, perhaps provide a message to the followership as well. Speaking of which, the youth who are the dominant uh, you know, population, uh, some of them are mostly disillusioned. And you find um, uh, amid all of this, the Jaffa syndrome, you know, uh, um, you know, informing a lot of their decisions. So what message would you have for the youth as well uh, at this time as we celebrate Good Friday? Yeah, well, the Japa syndrome, like you said, is an unfortunate reality we we'll find ourselves in. You know, uh, uh, I mean, uh, Nigeria is one country we've got. We've not got any other country. So, no matter how um, we, we difficult things are, no matter how tough things are, it is still our country. And um, uh, well, it may be greener on the, on the other side, like uh, many people would think, which is actually what is informing the Japa syndrome. But at the end of the day, you, you still come back to the reality that you've got this one country called Nigeria and you've got no other. So you leave and within a short space of time, you begin to desire to come back again to our country, you know, telling you that there's no place like home. You know, so um, while they think of, uh, of, of leaving, which is actually the case with many of the young people now, they should also think about ways of contributing to make our country better because... It's important. It's one country we, we've got. We've got no other. And uh, it, it should be a wake-up call also for the leaders. It's no good news that 
the greater percentage, that an appreciable percentage of the of, uh, of the young people uh, of our workforce is, is living in the country. It should be no good news. It should be a cause of worry for, for anybody in leadership position. So, I mean, it should be a wake-up call to them. Anything that could be done to make life meaningful, make our country habitable, they should not hold back. They should just be about it so that we don't uh, continue to uh, see this you know, Jabba syndrome continuing relentlessly like that because it's no good news for us at all. Welcome back. The people of Ungodo community in Umwanwa, Umwa here, South Local Government Area of Abia State have cried out to the federal and state governments to rescue them from gull erosion, which is threatening to sack them from their community. The residents lament their inability to access the school or health facility located in the area due to the gully at the entrance. They call on governments to declare a state of emergency at the erosion sites on the community roads. The menace of erosion and the deplorable state of the road has made life unbearable for the people of Ngodo community in Omunwanwa, Umwahia South local government area of Abia State. Residents of this agrarian community are lamenting that their lives and several buildings in the community are in great danger as a result of the gully erosion that has almost cut off the ancestral homes and farmlands, which consists mainly of cassava and oil palm. Lives have been lost. The community's commercial enterprise is being affected. The community used to do well in agriculture, palm, cassava, but nobody can try it now because the gully is so bad. And even where we stand now, we are standing on precipice. It's very dangerous. Right on that net is eating deep. We don't know what is happening, but we are just facing being on top. So it's an appeal save our soul to the federal government, to the state government, whoever can listen. Today, our people can't go to farm anymore. So that is why we are calling on the government to help us. Imagine when we have emergency here at night, health emergency, what will happen? There's no alternative to uh, where the uh, community health center is, no alternative. This is the only road you can pass through. You would have seen that child you know, um, walking along that, that's the only way we can move towards um, solving our other uh, social problems. The make a passionate appeal to the federal government and Abia state government to urgently fix the age-long gully erosion site, which has defied communal efforts. And our cry is that if it rains, when it, when it rains, season, this road will be impossible. We're not happy about it. The Minister for Works have their attention. He has visited here before, even though not this side. He visited in um, the side. Mm -hmm. Let him make it possible for the company to return to sides from the point they have stopped to the bridgehead. If it is not done, they have almost done nothing. If rains come again, Considering the state of things in this community now, if rains meet us again on this deplorable state, we are in trouble. Nobody, it will be impossible. Our people can no longer go to town. We are cut off completely. So it has affected us so negatively. Meanwhile, residents of this area might start counting their losses again once the rain sets in, as many farms, homes and other buildings have been affected. They are calling on the government to match words with action by asking the contractor that abandoned the road to begin work real quick. In a bid to enthrone lasting peace in Airboy State, the various communities involved in communal clashes have signed a peace pact to end killings, destruction of properties and farmlands in areas ravaged by conflict. The communities involved are... Efium and Eza Efium in Ohauku local government area, Amana in Eza South local government, and Ohanku in Ikuo local government area, and Abaomege and Ishinkwo in Onicha local government area of the state. I want to show you again. 
if you have some of your boys that are still in the bush shooting, I know some of them are permanently there shooting, please tell them to surrender their guns, be ready to surrender their guns. The white paper and the government of Right Honorable Francis Mufra is promising them amnesty. There will be amnesty and disarmament program for them. They will lay their gun. Government will embrace them and forgive them. And if need be, there will be empowerment for them. Because you cannot tell somebody to drop his gun and you say, go and see no more. Tomorrow you will go and look for another one. The governor of Enugu State, Mr. Peter Mba, has asked the newly inaugurated Governing Council of the State University of Science and Technology to complement the management of the institution and enable it to achieve its objective of delivering quality and sound education. Mba made this known at the inauguration ceremony, which held at the government house in Enugu. According to him, the council must bring value to the table while overseeing the finance and investment of the institution for proper accountability. It is my hope that uh, you are going to cultivate a harmonious relationship with the management uh, team of the university. You should both see yourselves as uh, your, your duties as complementary. It is, that is the only way we can achieve uh, the objective of uh, the university. Of course, our expectation is that you're going to uh, put in place uh, effective control in the area of uh, management of uh, finance and uh, investment of the university, and that you're going to see yourself as bringing value to what the uh, management team of the university uh, is doing. We shouldn't, uh, obviously, by the time a governing council um, begin to work at cross purposes with that of the management of the university. The objective for which you are here today appointed will not be realized. Following the implementation of free education in primary schools and in the junior secondary classes in Anambra State, the surge in registration of pupils and students in public schools has opened up gaps in basic learning and instructional materials. And to bridge this gap, Professor Chukuma Soludo, in his Education Friendly Stands, intervenes and provides multi-million naira instruction, instructional materials, ICT equipment, as well as shuttle buses for quality assurance, monitoring and supervision of schools in the state. It's the flag off of the distribution of the multi-million naira instructional materials and shuttle buses to schools across Anambra State and the headquarters of the State Universal Basic Education Board at Subeb comes alive with the presence of teachers, students and pupils who are the beneficiaries. The items to be distributed include ICT equipment, textbooks for English, mathematics and other core subjects, magnetic whiteboards, early childhood care and development apparatus, chairs and tables for GSS classes, iron framed tables for teachers and six shuttle buses for quality assurance, monitoring and supervision visits. The executive chairman of Asubeb, Dr. Vera Mwadinobi, commends Governor Saludo for his unwavering interest in promoting education. She says the procurement of the instructional materials was made possible through the payment of over 3 billion naira matching grant to UBEC slash SUBEX 2019, 2020 and 2021 intervention projects to improve the teaching and learning environment of the public schools. Immediately we assumed office as a board when he inaugurated us. We took it upon ourselves to, you know, to be reminding him 
that there is a backlog of counterpart fund because this counterpart fund helps in school renovation, helps in providing new school structures where it is not uh, enough. The head of service, Mrs. Theodora Igwegbe, speaks on behalf of Governor Soludo and notes that this administration ends the era of schools without teachers. It is not just a matter of employing teachers. He has employed 5,000 teachers and the process of employing another 3,000 is ongoing. But apart from that, there is improvement in every sphere of education. If for nothing else, if we look around here today, Everybody will agree with me that what he has given to Asubeb in order for the job of Asubeb to progress and for our children to benefit is not something that you can just sweep under the carpet. The Holy Spirit. The items are then flagged off and handed over. ECCD table and chair, 100 sets of ECCD tables and chairs. Some of the pupils sit on the new chairs to get a feel of what their experience will be going forward. Especially these instructional materials, at least it will help us with the teachers and the students and the pupils for learning and teaching effectively in the classroom. However, the school authorities are reminded to protect the items in order to serve the purpose for which they have been provided. And that's it on the program. We'll be back again tomorrow. I am Bukola Koka. Bye for now.